Welcome everyone to our webinar series, Music and Healing. Carlene and I are really delighted to welcome you to this ongoing series, which is exploring how music and singing are being used in a variety of ways to help heal the mind, body, and spirit. Uh, at Houston Grand Opera, we really believe that opera is much, much more than just a night out in the theater. This woman was was um, present that had been at the groups in her catatonic state. A couple days later, I received an, a note from this person that one of the things that she remembered most prevalently in her time there was the singing of my favorite things and, and that that really brought her through some of those uh, most difficult times. If more people understood the science behind music and the arts, they would be more engaged with it and more supportive. Of course, music is slightly unique in being both a science and an art. It's, it's both and you can't really have art out of music unless the science of music is right. Music can be a tremendous force for recovery, but to, to make their lives and their future much better. And, and you know, the, the brain is not a fixed, uh, rigid uh, set of connections that we have. Even in people whose brain has been damaged, there is a tremendous amount of uh, ability to, to, to remodel the, the brain, and music can, can play a, a critical role there. So your, uh, your research has had an enormous influence on Houston Grand Opera. You're, you've been very influential in our ongoing programs, and Carlene Graham, who uh, my colleague who introduced us today, uh, developed a music and empathy program based on your uh, research. I bet if you sing, you'll feel better. <gasps> I bet you will. It's all about singing with you. Oh, come on. Your favorite Christmas song? You don't know it. Stephanie, how has sharing your music online digitally influenced your experience of social isolation and loneliness through the pandemic? I, I can tell you that just, I had an experience last night where I was feeling really isolated in the middle of a snowstorm. I just thought, oh, you know, I'll go online and I'll Facebook Live a show. I felt enormously better afterwards because I had shared something with a group of people that I love. We actually were focused on dance. Um, and okay. in, in the teaching of those classes, oftentimes we would demonstrate a dance step and then forget to turn the music back on as people were practicing. And they very quickly pointed out to us that the music wasn't playing and that was a real bummer. <laughs> so we would quickly turn the music on and, and came to appreciate how important the musical aspect of the approach was. So that was really sort of the first light bulb, if you will, that maybe we should be thinking more about music. Did you know each other before this webcast? I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Paula, although I certainly heard about the amazing choir program that she's put together at Ryerson. Hearing the amazing program and reading some of the recent publications from your lab, I would love to discuss further uh, formal collaborations with you, Dr. Earhart. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. And I think this is the first time we've met face-to-face, -face, so to speak. It was always telephone or email, so it was pre-Zoom era. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Houston Grand Opera. 